Hey everyone, Brandon here with Galloway Precision. Today we're going to go over the installation of our reduced power spring kit for the Taurus Judge series of pistols. Uh, just to get the uh, can get this out of the way, this is only going to be for the Public Defender, the three inch, the Magnum, and the uh, Raging Judge. Uh, the poly ju polymer judge, the poly protector, uh, has a different way that the springs and everything are done in and quite honestly is a nightmare to take apart and put back together uh, for those of us that do it all the time let alone anyone at home so we'll probably not be doing anything for it uh, but anyhow <clears throat> we developed these with ismi they are 10 percent reduction over stock uh, or under stock i should say and so it brought the double action down from around eight ish to about six and a half seven and then the single action went from six to right at two and a half, three pounds. All right, and that of course will vary uh, from revolver to revolver just on how broken in it is, if it's new pistol, old pistol, so on and so forth. So, tools you're gonna need. You need your three millimeter. If you don't have a three millimeter Allen wrench and you still have the box your judge came in, you're gonna have an Allen wrench that came with it that is for the uh, grip nut to come off so you can get the grip out. Okay. You're going to need a small flat blade screwdriver. You're going to need one or two. I prefer using two so I can get everything out at the same time. But two paper clips or something of a similar size. And your polymer hammer. Okay. First things first, we're going to open our cylinder and we are clear. So let's go ahead and start taking everything apart. I'm going to start with our three millimeter and we're going to take our grip nut out. Grip screw, whatever you want to call it. We're going to pull that out. We're going to take the grip off. Once you get it pretty much, and you can see, it's hard to see down in there, but it'll be flush with the bottom. So once you get it about three quarters of the way out, you can actually pull the grip off. All right, so next, we're going to take our flat blade and we're going to remove the three screws that hold the top plate side plate top plate whatever you want to call it All right. now just like any other Taurus be very cognizant when you pull this one out because this is also the retention for the cylinder and we'll go over that when we put it back in but more importantly see how it's hollow so if you pull it out and you're parts don't come out just turn it over give it a tap into your hand and you'll have this little bitty detent and spring okay do not lose this this is very important cylinder cannot be timed correctly without that can't be held in place correctly and it just goes right inside that little screw okay so now that we got that off we're going to take we're going to hold the frame we're going to tap with our polymer hammer all around the side plate this loosens it and you can pop it right off that way do not take your screwdriver and pry you're going to mar everything up there is an indicator for the frame on the top of the side plate you mess that up you're going to have to send your gun back to taurus and get yelled at all right so we've got that off so now that we can see everything just like every other revolver we're going to cock that hammer it's time for action, huh? Cypress Hill, uh huh? All right. All right, we're gonna put our first paper clip in there, and that's why I like using a paper clip or a similar spring like uh, thing. I sound like a damn MRE package now, a rock or something. Um, mostly because you get the link. Now, there are specific tools that you can buy from Brownells, Midwest, and other places. Uh, that do the same thing, but why spend 20 bucks when you can just grab a paper clip and do the same thing? All right, now we're gonna go ahead and pull the trigger back. And we're gonna do the same thing for it. Ooh, maybe. Get on in now. Now, this one you may have to turn a little bit and then pull up like that. All right, and that's all we're gonna take out. We're gonna leave the transfer bar and everything else in there. We don't need to take it out. So you don't have to mess with any of the movie bits. All right, so now what I like to do is I'll start with the trigger. 
I make sure the strut is facing up and the retainer down and I put grab it with your index and thumb and just work that out and you hear it pop and there, that's the reason we hold our hand over it because if you just pull it this thing's gonna go flying or the rod itself is gonna go flying and if you got it pointed at your face you're gonna have a bad day all right so we're gonna take our trigger return spring off we're gonna replace it with the Galloway trigger return spring we can go ahead now when you go to put the retention nut locking nut whatever you want to call this I don't know the actual name right off the top of my head I don't have the schematic in front of me I call it the retainer you're gonna take you're gonna push it on there this is gonna be hard to show because even reduced this is still a lot of pressure for a short little spot you're gonna push it through until the hole comes out like that and then you're gonna put your paper clip back in there and move on to the hammer strap so the easiest way to do this that's why I'm showing you that now because you're not gonna see it way down here is to take put it on and be cognizant of where your holes are before you do this so you're not like oh no and then just slide it in just like that now since we're gonna be putting it back in you want to make sure your paper clip or spring whatever you're using sits about that far away from the edge because when you go to place this back in you can see there we go and we'll just use this to point with actually all right so you see down in there little hollow out nub all right you got a little hollow right there for that detent to sit in so that's gonna go right in that detent and go ahead and let the trigger go forward a little bit put the and you may have to turn this on because it turned like it didn't want it to all right so then you're going to set the detent in there you're going to put this back in the hole it came out of now see what happened there sometimes that's going to happen this is why we want the paper clip to move as you go to set it in there it pops that out of the way so what you want is to leave the paper clip in kind of out of the way till you get it seated and when you pull it back notice how it just dropped because i bottomed the trigger out well that's putting the pressure on the spring and I'm then just gently let the trigger forward so we've got that changed and installed now we're going to move on to our hammer strap we're going to do the same thing. It's easier to do with the hammer strut because you got a lot more real estate with the uh, plate that holds it all together. To take, set it up, push down, pull that out, and gently let that up. Again, massive spring pressure. You don't want this flying up and tagging you in the face. So now, what we do with the hammer is we take the strut, all right notice that the strut's the same on both sides but what you want to do make sure it goes back in the way it came out look for your wear marks okay see the wear right there on this side the top here but nowhere on that side that's the side that was sitting in the hammer and getting moved okay so we're going to take our new hammer spring and put it on when you go to put this on notice that the bottom is flat and the top is beveled it's going to be hard to see in the video here but you get the idea. Plus, you can see where the spring rests on the top, whereas on the bottom, no marks from the spring. Okay? So you can take that, press it down. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, it's going to, even though it's reduced power, remember, we only went 10%, so it's still going to take some oomph to get this down. All right, stick your paper clip in your hole capture it like that okay now here it doesn't matter how far through it is because where we're putting it you have this open space right here so if you look right there at your hammer you can see the indention where the hammer strut sits all right so what we want to do i like to do it this way i will hold it down here where the plate sits okay i'll line it up with the hammer And then I'll cock it. We'll just pull that out. 
making sure our strut and everything's where it should be sitting there yeah we're good all right let the hammer forward the trigger forward now we're going to put our side plate back in we're going to start at the top here with our little spot that indicates yes this is where it goes and we're going to take our polymer and hitting only the side plate because again remember we tap this what does it do it drives it out so Tap it down once you have your indicator in the correct spot. We're going to start with our cylinder screw. All right. Now, you're going to want to sit here and crank this thing down. I'm going to show you why you don't. It really makes you want to put it real hand tight, but here's the thing. Notice how hard that is to open. If you go to open your cylinder and you have to really push on it like that, it's over tight. Back it off quarter turn should be a nice smooth open and close of the cylinder so that's good so now we're going to put our last two screws in hand tight we don't need to over screw these things if you're a revolver owner and you shoot a lot what is the one thing you're supposed to check these screws for your side plate so after every couple hundred rounds make sure they're not coming out the back one you don't have to worry so much about because it's covered by the grip but that one and your cylinder one you can get to for the most part make sure they stay tight all right so we're going to put our grip back on take our three millimeter And tight all right so now we're gonna functions check first thing we're gonna do I've already told you but we're gonna check the cylinder make sure that the wheel moves freely in and out okay that means we didn't over tighten this if you did remember back it off quarter turn golden next what we're gonna do is we're gonna check double action all right obviously it works so now we're gonna check single double single and that's it everything's functioning the way it should uh, you also want to make sure your transfer bar comes up when you cock it if you go to cock it and the transfer bar doesn't come up it's come loose you'll have to go back inside and put it where it goes that way you can make it go because if there's no transfer bar you won't see your handy dandy little firing pin sticking out and that's it guys that's uh, the whole installation and like i said i'll get some readings and we'll do some more video right now it's just uh ammo is incredibly scarce even 45 colt and 410 shells at this point so uh shooting videos has been hard to pull off but like i said uh we'll get it up checked up <clears throat> in the vice later um i'm doing videos out in the kydex building now because it's quieter uh, we got three machines in there running non-stop so it's a little quieter out here so you guys can hear me speak i can think straight so on and so forth uh but it'll drop the double action from about an eight to a six and a half seven pound and then it'll drop the single action from around a five or six to around a two and a half to three pound single action pull so we'll get some measurements in the next couple days added in uh, at the end of the video or have a separate video and I am going to try my hardest to find some decent 45 Colt and 410 shells so we can run her through her paces again but that's going to wrap this one up guys this is going to wrap this one up guys uh, if you have any questions feel free to email me at tech that's tango echo charlie hotel at gallowayprecision.com be sure to follow us on social media to stay up to date with everything galloway precision links are below in the comments and as always, be safe, be accurate, and God bless.